Welcome back Cyber Explorers. I believe you all have heard about cyber attacks involving stealing credit card numbers or social security numbers, stealing credentials like passwords, pins, etc. and asking for a ransom. But we all need to realize that with our physical world overlapping more and more with the cyberspace, the attacks can go beyond the cyber wall and affect our physical world as well. Today I will recite one such first incident which will probably make you rethink what the future of Internet of Things and cyber physical systems has in store for us. Hi, this is XK and welcome to today's episode of Cyber Explorer. Date 23rd December 2015. Time 3.30 p.m. Place Pricker Bagdia Oblener Home Control Center in Ivano Frankwisk Oblast, Ukraine. The authorities at the control center were finishing their jobs as usual. Suddenly, they realized that there is a power outage, which is not a surprise, especially in those places. Although they are not sure of the cause, they hoped it's going to be over in a few hours. However, after a few hours, the company realized that the outage is a major one and is more widespread than it was initially assumed to be. Almost 8 provinces in that region were in complete blackout. Another company stated that they have been hijacked at around the same time and 30 of their substations were completely out of order. Their computer screens froze and the connectivity including their phone service wasn't working at all and all their intercommunication among the workers got disrupted as well. It affected over 230,000 people who were left without electricity for about 6 hours. It marked the first successful cyber attack targeted on a cyber physical system, specifically a power grid. The name is Industroyer or Crash Override. Let's have a look at the different events that happened before and during the incident and explain them in terms of the standard 7-step cyber kill chain, starting with reconnaissance or the step in which the attacker collects information about the target before launching the attack. According to the reports, the breach began in March 2015 with some spear phishing campaigns. We talked about spear phishing emails and how to detect them in an earlier video. You might want to check it out after this one. Anyway, following the campaign, they found a specific malware known as the Black Energy 2 on some of their systems that were part of the trouble. The interesting fact about the Trojan is that it was used in the past for some other cyber attacks as well. It has the capability of opening a backdoor for CNC, which we will be discussing in a minute, and also has the ability to update itself through the backdoor so that the newer modules can be added later on. The whole reconnaissance process was brilliantly planned. The attackers learned about the power grid systems, found exploits, scanned the Windows domain controller, and harvested the VPN credentials of the workers who used to access the SCADA networks remotely. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It is like a software interface to control and monitor industrial hardware and software systems remotely. Now moving to weaponization of the step in which the attacker designs the payload catered to the victim's environment. The malware itself is a combination of several tools. The actual attack was done using Black Energy 3, which is a tool to intrude the SCADA systems, discover the connected machines in the network, and choose the targets. It acted as the key component to install its predecessor, Black Energy 2, which was later used for gaining access to those systems. The Black Energy 3 was embedded in some Word and Excel documents which were then sent through emails to the employees of the grid. This brings us to the delivery phase in which the attacker delivers the payload to the target machines. The initial delivery was done using the spear phishing emails that downloaded the Word or Excel document containing a macro. Upon running the macro, which actually runs Black Energy 3, it installs the malware Black Energy 2 on those systems, which in turn open backdoors for future attacks and malware updates. On a side note, the new Black Energy 2 was even equipped with a new module of kill disk component 
that is even more powerful than its previous versions. It was later used to wipe off the data from the disks and remove its traces. Next we discuss the exploitation phase or the part in which the attacker takes advantage of the exploits possible in the victim's environment using their malware. However, in this attack, not much of the exploitation was required. They used the credentials they harvested from the VPN users by phishing to get into the SCADA systems. Then, using the user-level privileges, they also made their way to the HMI or Human Machine Interface to control the power systems later during the attack. Now comes the most innovative part of the attack pipeline. Later during the attack, the hackers launched DDoS telephone denial of service attack on the company's call center to make the lines busy enough to drop legitimate calls, thereby interrupting calls from the customers or among the employees, leaving them in the dark about the scale of the incident. Coming to the installation phase, or the part in which the malicious injects and some other codes are installed. The installation phase was the second most crucial part of the whole attack. The hackers built a malicious firmware to replace the legitimate one sitting on the serial to ethernet converters on multiple substations which was a part of the plan to prevent the authorities remotely close the breakers once the power outage occurs. They gained access and reconfigured the UPS or uninterrupted power supply as a result of which the backup power supplies to those control centers were also disrupted to keep the operators in the dark. These modifications caused the attackers to efficiently and smoothly launch the attack. Moreover, they covered all their tracks and made all sorts of arrangements to prevent the operators to fix the issue. Next, we discuss the command and control or CNC phase in which the installed malware opens and maintains a backdoor which is basically connection to the attacker's control center for remote access. In this case, the Black Energy 3 opened a backdoor that let the attacker install Black Energy 2 on those systems. Furthermore, the Black Energy 2 opened remote access that allowed uploading the malicious firmware and injects during the installation phase. Using these connections, the attackers were able to update the malware as well. However, most of the control was mostly done through the legitimate connections through the VPN using the credentials of the victims which were compromised during the reconnaissance phase. Finally, we come to the actions on intent or the phase in which the malware executes the main instructions for which it was built in the first place. The attack was successfully launched on 23rd December 3.30 pm. The hackers initially used the VPN and the compromised credentials to log into the SCADA systems. Then, they remotely switched the power off. Now, since they had already installed the code to control their UPS, they turned it unusable after this. This led to the complete cutoff of the backup energy sources. Next, the malware in destroyer used its kill disk command discussed earlier to wipe off the data from the target machines. Then it gained control and destroyed the MBR or master boot record on their hard drive which is essentially responsible for storing the operating system's critical records required during the booting. As a result of this, those computers could not be rebooted, making it impossible for them to fix the grid remotely. At the same time, they launched a TDOS attack on the company's call center to prevent the legitimate calls from happening to keep the operators working at different parts of the grid disconnected from each other. This lasted for 6 hours until they turned off the remote systems and switched to manual mode. The malware in destroyer was far more dangerous than it was used for. It had the potential to totally destroy the grids. Even though it lasted for a short span of 6 hours, causing a cut of about 73 megawatt hour of electricity, affecting 230,000 people, it demonstrated for the first time in the history of cyber attacks how a malware of just 23 lines of code is sufficient to bring down a whole power grid if the attack is highly planned, coordinated, and executed properly. It was one of the most sophisticated attacks ever causing damage to any cyber physical system till date. This malware was used again in December 2016 to attack and disrupt more such smart power grids. This time again in Ukraine. <laughs> Seems like they don't learn from the lesson. Although Ukraine blamed Russia for these attacks, not much evidence other than a few Russian IPs were found to support their claims. Overall, there is so much to learn from this incident. 
with the technology spreading day by day and critical physical systems getting connected to the internet the concerns of such attacks happening are also increasing and no matter how hard the defenders try to make us feel safe the attackers always find one way or the other to beat them in this arms race and the worst part is we don't know if more such specimens of higher potential are being prepared in some underground labs at this moment so the question is are we prepared for it hey thank you for watching this episode of cyber explore i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe it really encourages me a lot to improve my content also feel free to leave any suggestions in the comment section below and as always all the links and the references are in the description i will see you soon until then stay safe and stay curious